For the omens I've been listening to everything you said It's been running through my head Locked and loaded I got the feeling that you know it Yeah, I've only just begun I won't stop until it's done Till you're broken So welcome to the fire Waiting for this moment The final battle of the chosen See, I'm never gonna quit Got my legacy set in motion So welcome to the fire
welcome to the fire Cause the bigger they are, the harder they fall You build your fortress and I'll climb your walls You got your armor, I see your flaws So welcome to the fire Yo. Yo, what's up? That was a weird timing on the song ending there. That was that was bizarre. <laughs> and I will admit, I I was not paying attention, and uh, uh, I heard the clap, and I'm like, oh man, we're going. Ah, oh. how's it going, Patrick? How you doing? It's going pretty good. What about you, man? Living the, you? Living the dream. Living the dream. Living the dream. Oh, what a week. What a week. We made it to Saturday, though. Welcome, everyone. I uh, hope you had a great week. I uh, hope you have a great weekend as well. It's sunny here in uh, Houston, Texas. Uh, it's going to get up into the 80s today, Fahrenheit. So uh, it's going to be warm. It's going to be warm. It's going to be lovely. It's and be the, the, the yellow film is on my truck already. So pollen is in full bloom. Oh, that is awful. It's the death trap for me. So, yeah. So, yeah. I, I try to stay inside. So, it's all good. Uh, all right. If you are new to Guy in a Cube or new to the live stream in general, put hashtag new in the chat. We always love seeing the new faces. Uh, we always, uh, it's always surprising to see uh, who all is here. And we just want to say hi to you. Uh, so just great. Want to say hi. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and also uh, thank you to all the members of Gyna Cube. You help us do what we do here on Gyna Cube. We very much appreciate it. Um, it's just uh, always amazing to see the support uh, that we get uh, from everyone. Uh, and I love, I love the Gyna Cube community. I love the Power BI community. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just great to have you here. Uh, if you see folks with a green name or a Gyna Cube logo next to their name, those are members of Gyna Cube. Uh, and if you want to learn more, you can check out the link on the screen or hit the join button down below uh, just to learn about it. No commitment required. Just a big thank you for us. And uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's awesome. And then so members, uh, just hold your questions until Chatmaster C has given you the green light uh, at the halfway mark. Uh, and then we will get to those. Ah, oh, excellent. All right. Uh, let's see the new, how many new people are here today? So we got Christopher Forbes is new. Uh, Kevin Smith is new, <laughs> but old. <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, oh, Susan says it's a beautiful sunny day in the UK. That must be unique, right? Is that unique? I don't know. It's kind of like Seattle over there, right? Oh. Uh, uh, and then, uh, yeah, we got, who else is new? Maria's new. Nice. Thomas is grumpy. I'm sorry. Uh, Lindsay is new. <laughs> Welcome, Lindsay. She's from Boston. Uh, what else we got? I think that's it. I think that's all I saw. Hopefully I didn't miss oh, one. There you go. Uh, so Venkatesh said, how do I become a member of Guy in a Cube? Well, we just showed. Hit that join button on YouTube and you can find out. Um, in fairness, uh, depending on where you are in the world, like there may be some restrictions on how to do that, uh, with YouTube, but in general, just hit that join button. If you, if you don't see the join button, it's not available in your area. So apologies for that. Ah, uh, all right, there we go. All right. So questions, put Q colon in front of your question. It'll get in the queue. Chatmaster C is standing by to get them in the queue. All you need to do is one time and it will get in the queue. We don't get to all the questions. Uh, we never do. Sorry. Uh, come back next time. Uh, and we will, uh, Kevin Smith. No, I saw your name, Kevin. I, I, my, I raised my eyebrow. I was like, hmm, I doubt it's like the Kevin, although you are the Kevin Smith, right? At least uh, from mm -hmm. the guy in a cube standpoint. Uh, so welcome, Kevin. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, Q Colin, uh, please don't spam your question. One time's all you need. If you do spam your question, either Chatmaster C or any of our moderators are standing by to put you in a timeout. Uh, so we got a three strikes rule here on Guy in a Cube. Uh, at least everyone except for Patrick uh, will do it. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, just uh, be patient. We'll, we'll try to get to them. Uh, it's always good to get them in early uh, so that we can, uh, we can do that. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry, Kevin Smith, not Keith. I said, <laughs> Chat. <laughs> oh, not Kevin Smith. So I was thinking Kevin Smith in my head for some reason. I don't know. I'm I'm out of it right now. Oh, it's the allergies, all the sinuses. There we go. All right, are you ready, Patrick? I am ready. I'm. <sighs> yeah. Let's yeah. do this. Let's get to the queue. Yeah. All right. Um, by the way, the queue is a little light, so. Uh... So just get them in while you can. All right, uh, Sandeep's first question. Patrick's been uh, musing this one a little bit. Uh, yeah, since this is interesting. Since calculated columns are pre-calculated and stored in the model, how does context transition work if I use calculate function inside of a calculated column? Which filters will impact the calculations? I, I'm, I don't want to start with this, right? And Stewie, Stewie gave a good response. Stewie gave a great response. But then Sandeep came back and he said, in my example, I'm not invoking any measure in a calculated column. I can't think of any valid use case, but I want to know in theory. If you want to know in theory, no, no, no. If you want to okay. know in theory, Sandeep, I'm going to be honest with you, right? And we were talking about this, and I got both versions of Dax Definitive Guy, one that's all marked up and one that's not. The new, in the new one, if you go to page 150, it talks about context transition. You need to go read it, all right? If you want to talk about theory. But Stewie is right about it, right? It's going to take the... It's going to create, you know, bring all everything in from the filters, everything. And think about if you have individual rows. So it silently creates these filters for each one of those columns in that row. And theory, we don't have time to talk about theory in on the live stream, but you should go read this. You should go read that chapter. I forget what chapter it is. I don't know exactly. Chapter five. It's in chapter five. What, what was that page um, number again? 151. 151. 151 and that's where they introduce context transition but if you read even further to 154 they talk about context tr transition and calculated columns <laughs> we talk about it in calculated columns and um, that's what when you're in a calculated when you introduce a calculate in a calculated column that what that's what fires off the context transition basically um, but to really get it to work because it's looking at unique rows and typically when it does it so it's going to look for the unique row set and if you don't if if take for example in the book Marco actually or Alberto I don't know who wrote it but they they point out in that section if there's duplicates right and most time my fact table doesn't have a unique identifier if there's duplicates you could see you know some possibly overstated values but you need to go and read that chapter and we don't have half enough time to talk about context transition I think I've read this about 18 times and I just read it again this morning because I was like yeah and then I got it this is where I'm gonna end with it also depends because if you're using iterative functions ooh, ooh, not it just, depends If you're using <laughs> if you're using iterator functions, it's a whole different story. Um, it's a whole different story because we're not just talking about uh, an ag an aggregate like sum or min. We're talking about sum x. So now we're iterating rows, and that's when that unique uh, those that unique sets of rows come in. So anyway, uh, there you go. Did I curse? Did I curse? Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Anyway, I'm gonna put all these books away. And put all these books away. Yeah. So wow, that was a lot. Wow. Yeah, you got, you got Patrick all passionate Marco's about here. that one. Marco's yeah. in the chat. Yeah. Marco's Is in he? the chat. Did he say anything? I thought I saw him. I thought I saw oh, him. Did okay. I not see him? Well, I'm sure he'll he'll comment. Uh, yeah, he's so there. sorry, Paul Turley. He's there. Okay. Sorry, sorry, Paul Turley. That's okay. So someone someone asked uh, where was it? Uh, uh, if you could, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh my gosh, I lost it. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, MD uh, asked if you could zoom it, uh, uh, zoom in on page 150. <laughs> just it's it, was kind, it was kind of hard to it's read. It's kind of hard to read. It's yeah. Yeah. It's so, yeah. yeah, Marco's here. Marco's here. Okay. Yeah, Marco right. was so just Marco that. was just soaking it in with what you were preaching. 
So. <laughs> it's, it's his words. It's their words, man. I, <laughs> I, I just read the book. <laughs> uh. So, Sandeep, I, the short answer is you should definitely invest in that book and go read the chapter. There's some intricacies, and I actually went through the examples that Marco and Alberto put in the book because it's it's a, a very edge case, right? It's very unique what they did with the measure they created, and understanding how that context transition happens, it'll. I don't know. It's like a light bulb will go off when you start walking through these examples, and you'll understand how it works. It's 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 not easy to explain, you know, on a live stream. It's just not something easy to explain. Yeah. Maybe Marco can articulate it um, in ten seconds or less. I can't. All right. So the book, because Patrick didn't really uh, zoom in on more. It's it's the definitive guide to DAX. Yeah. So go get it at and Amazon. I, go, you know, second edition. Yeah. That is the book you want. Um, and yep. then uh, that is this should be in your on your bookshelf. And so I like what you said. You said it perfectly. Uh, uh, it's hard to truly master context transition until you start practicing. And then thank you so much, Marco, for your comment right there. Yes. Yes. See, it there performs again. It depends on the table. That's it. There you go. There you go. Calculated columns have no filter context, uh, but calculate performs context transition, and the result depends on the table. You might have an expanded hidden, table involved. Yeah, all these hidden filters. All these there's so many hidden filters, man. You yeah. just gotta know what's going on yeah. in there. Yeah. Nice. All, all right. right. Now for more, good. now a word from our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> The, the books have to uh, have to come in every once in a while. It's all right. All right, all right Matthias. Matthias, uh, when can we expect those Azure Synapse or was it Databricks videos Adam announced four weeks ago? Uh, it's definitely not Databricks, that's for sure. Uh, will it become part of the Power Platform? Uh, no. Uh, so Azure Azure Synapse Analytics is is part of the Data Platform. It's not part of the Power Platform, um, and the Data Platform is not a like it's not like power platform it's just you know it's an azure service um and so uh so we're working on it working on it um we were uh yeah we're, we're, it, it's coming very soon very soon uh well i say very soon it's probably going to take uh, another uh, probably about another three four weeks or so before they come out but we are actively working on it so it's stay a work tuned. in progress stay tuned it's they a are work coming. in progress they are coming all right uh parseram uh, can we do a dynamic measure for conditional format with calculation groups? Uh, uh, if yes, what's the simplest solution? Why? Well, what do they mean dynamic measure? Dynamic measure. So like for conditional formatting, you know how you can use a measure to determine if it's the format string for the formatting. Yeah. Would that, I've never tried that. Does conditional formatting work on the calculation group? Like for the values there? I don't, I don't understand what, I don't. Can we do a dynamic We're not saying yes, you condition? can. I would think so. Do you have, do yes, you have you a, can. do you have a calculation group handy? I don't, mm. I don't understand the question. I think that's the, the bigger problem. Can we do dynamic measure for condition format? Well, I think that, so let's, let's separate these out for first off. Can you do All dynamic right. measures in conditional formatting? Yeah. And then the other thing is, yeah. uh, can we, can we use conditional formatting with calculation groups? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, and, uh, yeah. So Bernat said yes. And then Alex dropped a, a blog post from, uh, enterprise DNA. So, yeah. See, but I think Paul, Paul is, I, I, Paul is like me. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I understand. Wait, okay. If you guys say yes, I'll go. With yes. <laughs> but I'm not quite sure. I understand the question. I'm, I'm with you, Paul. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, maybe you could do that. Yeah. Doesn't it? I don't know what the question is. I don't understand the question. Well, the question is, can you do a dynamic measure nah. for conditional format with calculation groups? I don't know how. I don't know how calculation <laughs> groups ties into a dynamic measure for conditional formatting. I, I think they're two separate things. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the part. All he's right. just got. He's got. There's two separate questions there, and he's like just wanting to do both. So see now uh, you need not, a secondary dummy. You measure. need another measure. Yeah. You can't just do it with that single measure. That's what I'm talking about. But it's not just one measure. Well, no. Yes. Yeah. 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 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if you're, so when you're using the calculation group, like there's a measure involved yes. with the calculation group. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So yes. you'd have to have a secondary measure for the conditional formatting piece. Just for the formatting. Just yeah, for the, just okay, for the there formatting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just for the okay. formatting. Yeah, now Patrick okay. is on. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now we got it. Okay. Now we got it. All right. Okay. Uh, All, right. All right. I have no idea what chat master C said. It's right there. I have no idea what that's about. That's okay. All right. Oh, she was referring to the question. <laughs> I don't know what the question is. It's right there. Oh. Yes. Got it. All right. Cool. So now we are all... Everything makes sense now. So it's it's Patrick's birthday's coming up, so he's getting a little slow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it is two months today. Two uh, months to the day. Yeah. My birthday is two months away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> takes a little bit. That's <laughs> a long time. That's uh, 60 days. <laughs> a all right. long time. <laughs> all right, here we go. This is an interesting question. How how to do a cumulative column sum in Power BI other than DAX? I mean, you could use an implicit measure, right? That would give you a sum without writing any DAX, but outside of that, you got to write DAX. You got to write DAX. I mean, it's oh, a, you, oh, wait. what's well, either an implicit measure DAX. or you got to write DAX. Yeah, right. Gotta write DAX. Like, gotta write DAX. That's, how you, that's how you do a sum. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can do a cumulative, well, so a cumulative sum, column sum. But I mean, yeah, it's just a straight sum on a column. I can do that. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> power query, but don't. <laughs> you could. Right? Uh, yeah, you should use DAX. Yeah, that's the thing, Eric. Yeah, implicit for cumulative. Yeah, that doesn't work. So the implicit uh, will just give you, you just... the straight sum. All right, so we're just kind of... Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. If, if you know the... If you know the aggregate level that you're going to do it at, then you can build that all in the back end. But it's at that point, you got, there's no measure. There's no aggregations. It's aggregated at the grain. And you wouldn't want to do that. I think that's what Alex is talking about. Do it in a measure. Yeah. And I, I see a couple comments there about quick measures. Um, you know, we've got the AI for DAX thing coming too. So that'll be great. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's going to solve all the problems. Yeah. That'll just write it for but you. But there you go, Paul. There you go, Paul. Why <laughs> not use DAX? Why <laughs> not? Totals in Power Query, but don't. Please don't. But don't. Please don't. <laughs> oh, oh, man. That's and see, that's, see uh, that's, that's what I'm talking about. What, what Chris is saying. If you do it in the low, it's dead data. It's not sliceable right, at that right, point because right, right. it's accumulated and there's nothing you can do with it. Yep. 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 Cool. Yeah. Nice. Good question. I really <laughs> like having those comments. Two, in two different, two really different like comments that. saying, oh, that's a good interview question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do interviews anymore. Uh, <laughs> we struggled a little bit on that one. Yeah. Uh, so Pabita says, because DAX is hard. No, it's challenging. It's not hard. It's just challenging. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, Bernat's got a question. Uh, if you had to build a new data warehouse from scratch, would you go Kimball, Inman, or something else? Inman, 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 or something else? Inman or something else? You wouldn't go Kimball? <sighs> Dang it. It All right. depends. All right. All right. It, it truly depends. We talked about this the other day. Yeah. We were talking about... Um, we're talking, we're prepping for one of these Synapse videos. It's like, which tool, you know, solves the problem. Now, by default, I'm probably going to go Kimball. I'm going to do a star schema and go that route. And depending on the questions I'm trying to answer, the reports, what analytics I'm trying to do, you know, maybe it, it forces me to take other paths, but I'm going to start with Kimball. I'm going to start with Kimball, but this is where we got to go gather some requirements and talk to our report consumers and see which, you know, which tool is best for the job. I know, Dataverse. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, whew, whew, yeah. Dataverse, David. So, I didn't, I, you guys I don't know. Stay if, tuned. You, I don't know if Scott, I don't know if Scott's in the, in the chat. I don't think I've seen him, but uh, he would, he would love you for saying Dataverse, but also he yeah. would say, no, that's wrong. <laughs> And yeah. I know you were joking. You were joking. That's fine. I, I, you, I think the um, challenge here, though, is that I, look, Kimball's the 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 one that most people know, um, yep. and so like that's what they're going to default to, right? And and maybe that's the right, like that's the default. Uh, but understand, like you said, the requirements and where you need to go, and understand the pros and cons of either, 
right? And where they fit. Yep. So there's no right one answer, right? So you stay tuned. Stay tuned for our new videos all about this data stuff. <laughs> oh stay my tuned. Gosh, We're going to answer a lot of these questions. <laughs> <laughs> Why take wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about a lot of these things. We're going to talk about a lot of these things. Just stay tuned. Whew. Uh, uh, Mim also had a question for you, uh, Patrick. Uh, when's your TikTok debut? <laughs> so true story. So, and I saw like the TikTok stuff that came up on Twitter. Like it was right around bits, uh, when that came out and, and I saw that and I laughed cause I'm like, true story. Patrick and I actually had a full on conversation about that. Like yes. what? Yeah. Two months yeah. ago. Um, two months and ago, I said, maybe. look, you know, I see yeah. all the TikToks where they're dancing and they're pointing stuff. And I said, Patrick, like, let's just you and me, like some middle-aged, you know, <laughs> guys just sitting there doing like, that's a good laugh, right? That's entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, ma'am. That was oh. my TikTok right there. Oh. <laughs> go snip it, snip it from the recording and put it on TikTok. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I mentioned that to my younger daughter and she got immediately embarrassed. She's like, do not do that. So, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I told Patrick he should do it. I'm like, it's anyway. All right. Akil. Uh, What's the easiest way to revert a renamed field at visual level to its original field name? Oh, so so you know how like in a visual in the field way you can rename the um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. the value and so like that's how do you just, revert that? That's just, but that's just the display, right? That's yeah. just the display yeah. name. Yeah, you're not changing uh, it in the model. So, so just double click it and name it back. Sorry, I got distracted by the comments. <laughs> <laughs> well, so but say but say like so say I did that and I saved the file. I close Power mm -hmm. BI desktop. I reopen. I'm like, oh, I want to revert that back. <laughs> I don't know. So, so what you can do, and I see Scott, I, I see your comment. You are right. So, but Tom, I like Tom's better. I like Tom's better, right? So you just double click on it again and name yeah. it back. Yeah. 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 That's what I said. Yeah, just double click. Yeah. 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 Just rename it back. Yeah. Just rename it back. Or you could delete and re-add it. So there's no, yeah. there there is no like real like revert button on that from from the visual. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you can get yeah, Paul that. Control Z. Not if you close Power BI Desktop and you come back in. And also, what I don't know, and so there's so many caveats to this. So it depends if undo is going to work. And so I don't know if right undo now. actually works in the field well. It doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't. Work. Oh yes, it, if, yes, yes it does. Yes it does. Yes it does. Here, wait, we're going to go to your machine. Show it. All right. So, burp. so I renamed color to Patrick. Yeah. 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 All right. Do it again. Uh, and do oh, control Z this time. Uh, control do? Z does not work. Control Z does not work, but the really. Oh, yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Oh, my God. Yes, it did. Control You're Z. Throwing my emotions it all did. over the place. What are you doing? It, it worked. It worked. <sighs> it worked. It worked. Control Z worked. Yes, oh, Alex. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, we're not doing that. <laughs> oh. I remember Alex one time. Say? So, so Alex, Alex brings up a thing. There was uh, some customer issue where Alex and I were wallowing on, you know, what's going on, and I just busted out the JSON of the the visual stuff, and Alex was like, "What the heck are you doing?" <laughs> like, like, well, if we want to figure it out, let's go there. So, anyway, all right, cool. Oh, all right. Next one. Uh, let's see. With Pro, so a shared workspace, a data flow can read itself and updates. Okay. With Premium Workspace, if it reads itself, not incremental refresh, it starts by erasing itself and can't update itself. Why? Ooh. Read itself. So, read itself. Read itself. So I know you can do linked entities. You say read itself. What does read itself mean? 
You can reference yourself. That would be like a circular reference, though. Why would you do that? Read itself. I don't know what read, read itself, itself means. So it can read itself and updates and shared, but it... Hey, did you say... Did you have an It Depends? Sorry, I, I, I mean... Oh, I, I did. I don't know. Yes, oh. I did. There you go. Oh, uh, yes, uh, why it's saying it. reference table. Um, okay. But... I'm trying to understand the scenario there of why. So, like, it's going to drop. So, you're saying in premium workspace, it'll drop and then reload everything. Um, I, I'll be honest, I don't know. Uh, I'd have to try it. Um, Alex, I don't know if you need. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. I like, I need a little more on the scenario. Um, uh, I. I I would honestly, so if I think about a data set refresh, it, you effectively are reloading everything um, outside of if you have partitioning, then you're just reloading the partition. But for data flows, I do knew. I haven't, that's the first time I've heard that question also. I'd have to play around with it and dig into that a little bit to understand. Sorry, not, not sure, not sure. That is a good one, that stumped us. I, I, I've never heard that. I've never heard it either. So it's uh, it's something we can we can look into. Um, yeah, my so without knowing anything else, without knowing uh, you know any further details about it, and also not knowing for sure like what's actually going on, I will say that it's probably by design. <laughs> it's about the best I can give you. Uh, it's because it was designed that way. I I don't know. Uh, all right, uh, Allison, uh, in a Power BI report, is there a way to trace what visuals a measure is used in? Oh, that comes up every once in a while. So go. go. No, no, there, I mean, there's tools. There's external tools that you can use that'll help you identify these things. You could also, I, I think it was with Michael Kowalski. Michael Kowalski has a report analyzer tool that does a really good job um, displaying that and if you have premium and uh, the log analytics connected you can start querying it because he we get this visual ID and we can actually go see some things based on that visual ID so there's I mean there's tons of things and then you can see in the chat Stephanie yep. Bruno's got yep. a really nice field that's what I immediately tool out there to. yeah so there's yep. lots there's so many different ways probably start with Stephanie's tool um, and see if that works for you yeah, so the report analyzer is the one that Michael Kowalski wrote. Um, so definitely check yeah, it out. So, do video on it. so I'll say there's nothing uh, in out of the box that does that for you. Nope. Um, so you've got to look nope. at an external tool that's doing that analysis. So basically yep. they have to crack the PBIX file uh, and then go look at it. Uh, basically that report JSON file um, and go get the nope. visual IDs I, out of that. So There's somebody else. I think Imca. I think Imca. Yeah, so Didier uh, talked about the Power BI Cleaner from Imca Feldman. Uh, is very ah, robust tool. okay. Yeah, I think it's Imca. So, so and then, okay, uh, all right, yeah. No. Field Finder, and yeah, so there's all all sorts of stuff. Lots yeah. of tools. Community is amazing. Excellent. All right. Moving on. Where are we at? Imca. Three Imca minutes. Feldman. What's Imca's last name? Imca Feldman. Imca Feldman. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go. Uh, I have an issue with Power BI interview. Um, always they're asking regarding data warehouse and I don't have experience on that. Uh, can Please, can you help us how to deal with that? I would go read about data warehousing. Um, so, I, I mean, let me, let me come at this from <laughs> like, so like from a Power BI cap perspective, which I would say is extreme and deeply technical, um, they're absolutely going to get into that. But also when you, when you talk about data modeling uh, and best practices from a Power BI perspective, the roots of that are in, you know, the data warehousing approaches of, of old, um, of yester, of, of whatever you want to say. Um, and so like having understanding of those concepts will allow you to be more effective when you're designing out actual Power BI models and, and looking at an actual production deployment. Um, and so, like, look, if you're just putting together a throwaway thing, do you really need to know about all that stuff? Probably not. Um, but if you're doing a production-level thing, especially when you start working at enterprise grade and you're going at bigger data, 
um, you absolutely need to think about those concepts and what those best practices are. And so the reason to know about the data warehousing is not because Power BI is a data warehouse, but it's because those concepts are going to really help you. So when one of the previous questions about which which uh, which data warehousing approach are you going to go? Are you going to go Kimball? Are you going to go Imran? Like those are things that if you understand what those are and you know what a star schema is and you know you know how those things relate. Um, like those are those are things like uh, there's one of the videos I have and uh, you know I, I ask this question a lot is like okay what 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 dimensional warehouse or what dimensional modeling pattern would produce this type of result um, like why would you end, even end up with a data value like that because typically people are like for the example I'm thinking of uh, people uh, are normally like oh that's just bad data I'm like no that was intentional data so why would you have that as intentional data in your model like what pattern can you think of from a data warehousing approach that would cause that data to show up in that way and so that's why it's important to know some of those concepts um, and how you're doing it and that's why it pops up in interviews so what are your thoughts patrick i don't know that's that's it i like alex's uh you start with the course that marco and alberto does it's free i think it's a free course so go yes. and check that course out yes absolutely yep. absolutely um, yeah, the data modeling stuff. So, so there's, there's tons of info out there. So like, uh, you know, the Kimball book, there's the, you know, the course that SQL BI has, there's, there's all sorts of resources out there. Um, what? I was looking at uh, sorry, a question without a cue. Never mind. Just... Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> I figured that's what you were. All right. So, uh, we are at the halfway mark. Uh, so we are going to member only chat where members and moderators can participate in the chat, but, uh, everyone else will not be able to. Uh, you can still watch and still learn and still, you know, get a lot of great info. Um, if you do have a burning question that we didn't get to, so apologies, we never get to all the questions. Uh, there's always just too much and it goes so fast. Uh, so come back next time. Uh, but if you do have a burning question, feel free to do a super chat. Uh, if you do a super chat, make sure you type in the question before you hit the button. Um, otherwise you're just sending money. Um, and, uh, the, uh, uh, super chats always take priority. So. All right, we are kicking I'm over. I'm laughing at Eric Berry's response to the question. That's like, only an hour. Explain, too. explain it. We don't. We, we need way more than an hour to explain. Oh, <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, we are now over at members only. Uh, so if you want to learn more about that, like I said earlier, go ahead and hit that join button uh, to learn more. Uh, no commitment required, but uh, just a, a thank you. So, all right. Ah. Uh, over to the member queue uh and uh members get your questions and it's fairly light uh so uh let's do this uh kevin uh is there documentation available for the different compatibility levels and the features included Ooh. or at least the latest available compatibility level Ooh, that's a good question uh, i don't there? know i don't think there is <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Oh no. So, uh, so oh, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's. This is an exercise all of us can partake in. We will do this. Uh, let's go over to my machine, and I will say uh, when when you go to the the search engine of your choice. Um, but when you go to Bing, we're going to type in analysis services compatibility level, and let's see what we get. <gasps> Ooh. All right. I, in all seriousness, Kevin, I've I've never actually looked for this before, but uh, here we go. Latest supportability, you, I mean, supported we, compatibility levels fifteen hundred, but there's actually a so there's increments of fifteen hundred, right? So fifteen hundred uh, is the major yeah. uh, version of that. Um, and yes, this is specific to analysis services, but it applies to Power BI as well. Uh, oh, that's all I got. Man, I never, I've never even, I never. That's even all I got. This up before actually mark it's up to 1565 i think now with the uh, hybrid table so yes. it's like it's 1560 i think it's 1565 yes, 1565 now. yes kevin so, that's a good that's a good question though kevin i uh, i don't know if there is something out there that is a good question man yeah, that's yeah I, i'm not aware of anything else past that so this is what you can. Oh, so Marco put something. This is what you can do. Decompiler. I do that. I don't know what. What? Marco's Marco responded. Oh, 
No, God. Chatmaster C saying there's a spider. I'm sorry. You're going to oh. have to live with that for right now. She doesn't like spiders. Uh, that's, that's a good question, Kevin. Oh, that's a good question. I like it. I like that question. Oh, decompiler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the decompiler, so that's breaking <laughs> down the .NET. Uh, yeah. Stuff. Yeah, I like it, Kevin. I'm thinking about or not it. the .NET, but yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, I'd like, like, are you going to get an actual listing of all of the, the features that are part of that now? Some of that's a discovery thing. Yeah. So it's always interesting. Because I remember when you did the, yeah. the hybrid table thing, you noticed like, oh, the compatibility level. Yeah. Uh, bumped I up. Did. I did. As a result of that. And then this is what, this is what Kevin is saying, though. He's saying uh, maintain a model with tablet editor. This is kind of needed. This is kind of needed to know what's. Well, I just always go with the latest one. I just switch yeah. every one's the latest one, so I get everything. Well, but how do you but know what's the latest point, though, one? Kevin. Because the only way we found oh, out no, about right. the hybrid table is you saw it. Um, I did. So it's like, I how did do you even diff. know that there's I a, did a diff, a yeah. One. I mean, it's, yeah. it's about the features no, you're, you're right. using also. So. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> she keeps looking at question, it. Kevin. That's, oh, I see it now. Oh, I can see it. Is it a big it. spider? A no, it's, spider? it's a little itty bitty. Uh, it's a little itty bitty uh, guy, and he's way, way up. He's nowhere near her. She posted it. It's not like it's a spider. I know. It's not like you're driving down the road and it just kind of comes down from the rearview mirror and like freaks you out and you get in an accident. It's nothing like that. So, all I will say is she chose to put her desk right there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> about to get in trouble. She's going to throw something at me in a minute. Uh, all right, Thomas. Uh, what about best practices for documenting the data model and the DAX? Oh, this comes up all the time. Uh, so <laughs> what are your thoughts, Patrick? It's an itsy bitsy spider. That's funny. Okay, um, that has nothing to do with documentation. I, uh... <laughs> but sure. it, you have to document so that's where I start. That's where I start. Uh, you have to document yourself. And once you do the documentation, you know, if you're designing the model, there's comment fields in the tables, there's comment fields for all the objects. Oh, and then once you have, once you have all, go ahead. No, no, keep going. Sorry. Oh, and then once you have all that done, you can use Azure Purview. Azure Purview actually pulls in the schema and I have that over on my whiteboard to do a video on Azure Purview um, right now, and I just haven't done it. But when you can use Azure Purview, and it'll actually pull the schema. When, once you scan your Power BI tenant, it pulls the schema, and then you can see all that information in Azure Purview. But I mean, you, or you can use, I think somebody just said you can use DMVs to connect to the model. But yeah. you still have to document it in the model yourself. You still have to say, go onto the description of that table and write that description. So anyway. Yes. That's all that's all I have. I agree. And it's important to document too. So yes, yeah, Alex. Important to document. Alex, thank you for reminding me and then uh 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 Laura as well. Uh and then Chatmaster C on the side also. What? Uh I totally blew past that there were two super chats. Um I was so, gonna remind you here. Okay, good, good. Uh so Alex, thank you for the super chat. Patrick for question. Uh no, question for Patrick, not Patrick for question. Uh, can you please explain the Vertipack engine? He watched me explain this at bits. <laughs> <laughs> he watched me explain this at bits. And uh, Alex, oh, Alex, Alex, Alex. Let's see if I give you 65 million rows of data again, Alex. Let's see if I, I spend three days getting 65 million rows for you. Uh, so and the, reason engine, it took, the reason it took 30, or three days to do 65 million yeah. rows of data is because he hand types it. I that's why, that's why it takes that long. Row. Anyway, go, so go forward. There's, there's, there's two engines, and Adam likes to refer to the FN as the front end engine. It's the front end. And the storage engine. Yes. It's the front end. It's, it's the front, front end. end. No, man. Which actually, if you think about it, it technically is. I, like, from, from the engine perspective, it's the, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, there's a, there's a formula in the storage, right? And so it's a whole bunch of time. There's chapter, <laughs> I forget what chapter in the definitive guide. Go read it, Alex. So I'm not going to explain for the pack here. <laughs> columns, 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 Adam. Compressing Alex, the columns. columns Compressing the columns. 
Compressing the columns, yes. not rows. Compressing yes. the columns, not rows. It is, it is the heart of Power BI, though, so you should... Uh, yeah. under, the one thing I will say, and like this is where the back of the definitive guide to DAX, but that's like my favorite part of the book, because it goes through, yeah. talks about like the actual, some of the internal stuff and like how this works. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and that, yeah. that's really about the Vertipak engine, right? Like how does that actually work? Um, and understanding that will help you. There's a video. Marco did a video on this. Yeah. 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 He did. He did a whole video on Vertipak. And I, I'm, I'm surprised Alex hadn't put it in, answered his own oh. question. Because hey, he, did, he actually did the slides that I talked to in the session. So I know Alex knows what the Vertipak oh, engine we is. All, we all know that Alex knows. <laughs> That's why. He's spurring the conversation is what he's doing. <laughs> All right, Wyatt, uh, thank you for the super chat. Uh, he asked if there is a prediction over under for the It Depends total for 2022. You know, it, it, the, it has gone down. I'm watching a trend, and it, the, the, the numbers for It Depends, we're only at two today. So um, it's kind of hard. Give me a couple of more. Well, uh, so, so Wyatt, I will, say, I will say that the over under for it, it really depends. I know. <laughs> and three. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Ye. Uh, Ye asked, uh, would like to send a question to Adam and Patrick. How do we do it? So Ye, uh, yeah, I commented on this a little bit earlier uh, before we were, when we were in the countdown. So after the live stream in the uh, community tab of the Gynacube YouTube channel, so for members that are visitor and above, uh, I will put instructions again in there. Uh, so it's, it's been a little bit since I added the instructions, but that's where you can go. Uh, go to the YouTube channel, go to the community tab, and then for visitors and producers, you'll see... Uh, the instructions for how you can pre-submit a question um, for for the stream. Awesome. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, yes. Oh, this yes. is fun. This is so oh. fun. This is so fun. Marco has a question. Oh, Marco yeah. says, can I see Patrick DBA's face watching yes. Monday's announcement uh, from SQL BI? I know he can see the future. Ooh. You will you will have a full video on this as soon as it's available, my friend. Well, but he Don't wants worry. the reaction. He wants the reaction video. Okay, All right. I'm gonna figure out how to do it. It's gonna be hard because I gotta time it. I don't know when I'm gonna see it. I don't know when I'm just gonna run my my no. record forever. No, no. Say. So well, go 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 for it. Oh, maybe maybe we should do a live stream at the point that that video premieres, and we'll just watch Patrick watch the video. Okay. That sounds like right. fun. Let's do that. Uh, we, yeah. We're not going to do that, but uh, we can record that. <laughs> make a TikTok. Oh, make we'll a make TikTok. a TikTok. Yes. A reaction TikTok. <laughs> when when Patrick sees the reaction, he'll start dancing all around. So, ooh, do you hear that? No. You didn't hear that? All right. I didn't know if the microphone picked no. that. There's some, some big plane, just propeller plane, just went oh. right over the house. Yeah. thought it was like, Pearl Harbor or something coming down. I don't know. Anyway. All right. Uh, so, Marco, we're excited, though. We're excited. Patrick more so than me because I think he knows more about it. I am. Uh, um, I all right. Uh, Chris mm -hmm. Jones. Uh, Microsoft recently acquired Ally. Uh, they make a standalone OKR tracking tool similar in concept to Power BI goals. Is there any in integration coming between the two? I have no idea. I have no information on that. Uh, and I will be honest, even if I did have information on it, I'm pretty sure I couldn't say anything about it. Um, so probably couldn't. Yeah. 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 So sorry. Um, it's an interesting thought. It's an interesting thought. So, um, RK Tech, let's see here. Uh, how to filter all visuals in the report every day based on measure or data field. How to filter all visuals in the report every day based on a measure in the data field. A, filter. a measure or data field. Measure or, wait, based on a measure or data trying to understand how to filter all visuals in the report every day. When you say filter it every day, what does that mean? Like, so every day, like it's, it updates the filter. 
Uh, but so, to filter all the visuals, if we step all the way back, though, to filter all the fish, visuals, whatever measure or data field you're using, it has to be some relationship or some something that's going to cause them to filter first. Yeah. First. Yeah. yeah. Right. So if I bring an attribute over and it has nothing to do with that visual in any shape, form, via DAX, via virtual relationship, physical relationship, it's not going to filter it. So that's where you need to step back there to make sure it does all of that. Um, uh, sorry, the spider thing. We could talk about the chat. Um, then we could talk well, about. So, but all the other thing things. I'm the other thing I'm caught up on is the everyday bit. Like, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't I know. RK, part. if you're still there, can you? I don't know if you can give any more details on that. Um, what does that mean? I don't know. So he says based, based on, on the, the latest state. state. Ah, okay. All right. So, so, well, yeah, so that's easy, right? So based on the date that you're going after, whatever date you're, you're doing, um, you know, just get max of that date and that's your filter. Or just use, use relative, use a relative. This came up last week. Use a relative date slicer and say oh, yeah. current date. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. And yeah. Can, you show it? Down. Yeah. can you show it? Uh, let me see. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to filter anything. Sure. No, I know, but at least show the relative dates live, sir, and like how you would get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, you're up. So here's the filter panel, right? And I have a calendar, and I don't know if I have data for today, but if I just take date, put it filters on all pages, or filter on this page, wherever you want to put it, change it to relative date, and in the last, or is in this day, and if I click apply, right? It's gonna filter everything that is for today. Yeah. And if that if I have data for today, it's gonna filter everything. I don't have data for today. I know I don't. I haven't ran my script today. But if I click that, right, it's not going to show anything because I don't have anything for today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so good point on there is that um, depending. Also, be careful about what you do. So like there were some comments about the today function in DAX. Just yep. be aware. Yep. Like yep. you know, it'll give you a general mean time or whatever the general GMT or mm -hmm. U UTC, yep. whatever you want to call it. Um, so so understand that that may come into play. Um, and so as long as you're aware of that, you can handle on it. This. I did a video on this a while ago, and everybody else is saying, if you add a column to your calendar, you can do offsets, you can do all types of stuff there, and then add that to the filter. And then it every time it refreshes, it's going to give you today. Anyway, you can, there's a lot of ways you can do this. Yeah. Relative yeah, yeah. date is the easiest one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so Paul, uh, your EST equals minus five. That depends on daylight savings. <laughs> daylight savings. <laughs> <laughs> <Just> saying. <laughs> uh, lovely, lovely time zone math. All right. Uh, Thomas, uh, what about best practices for documenting the data model and the DAX? I hope I'm not repeating this. I think you're repeating that. I think you did. We, yeah, we talked about that. I think that, you repeated it, man. Right? Yeah, we just talked about it. Yeah, so add comments, add, you know, uh, you could do data dictionaries, you could do uh, like purview, all that stuff. All that stuff. I mean, you're going to have to do it. The, the, the hard part I think about a data dictionary is somebody's got to type this stuff up. Yeah. There's, there's no, if you want to add comments, you know, if you want to have descriptions, nothing automatically generates those descriptions. Yeah, so. Paul <laughs> takes a little bit more than just the Senate passing it. So I, I will, yeah, don't get me started on that. That's going to be a whole thing. I, yes. I, I hope it does get, I hope it does. I hope, I hope that would be magical. Um, and for those outside of the U S that aren't paying attention, there's a, there's a bill out there that's hopefully going to just say daylight savings time is the only time and there are no more time zone changes. So it's just, that's what it is. Um, and so we just stay on daylight savings time. And that would kick in next November of 2023 if it all goes through successfully. Still got some more steps to do though. Um, all right, Mr. Chris, what admin settings are needed to publish a template app? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I uh, wish Alex was on the stream with us. He's, he's been through this. Uh, so I know we were going through it for something else. So, uh, so admin settings, let me cut over to my machine. Let's explore a little. Um, and so if you're a Power BI admin and you go to the admin portal and we come down to tenant settings, 
Uh, and let's do a search for template. There you go. Template, organizational content packs, an app, and then, uh, yeah, there you go. So that needs to be enabled. And then you can specify that. So this is allows people to actually publish uh, a template app. But then there's other aspects about it as well in terms of like the things you have to do. And I'm forgetting the term of it, uh, but I remember Alex was walking me, telling me about this. Of like there's a there's a whole process that you have to do to get it on App Source. Um, and so that's a whole thing. And I I'll be honest that outside of like there's no Power BI permission for that. Um, but uh, so this is the only actual tenant setting to actually create the template app from a Power BI perspective, but then you've got to go through other stuff uh, in terms of getting it into like app source and publishing and all that great, great stuff. I don't know. Uh, there's a process. It's a process. So, and then Alex uh, shared, <laughs> he said app source is wild. Yeah. Yes, it is. So, uh, all right. Uh, so Chris, yeah, and I don't know, like, uh, if you're going down that journey of, of publishing a template app, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Um, all right. Uh, yee. Uh, using filter in the filter panel for last day versus using DAX to create measure for last day and performance differences. It depends. <laughs> it depends. Um, so uh, where this also comes down from a depends perspective is... Um, you know, what your data model looks like, what the DAX looks like, like what you're actually doing. The best thing I could tell you is try both bust out DAX studio and go look at server timings, right? And see what that difference is. And then can we optimize? And then based on your data and your data model, that will tell you which one is better or performs better. Um, like, I, I don't know. Um, cause I mean, the filter panel is going to apply a filter to what you're doing. Um, but if you do it from a straight DAX perspective, it's also going to have ramifications on that as well. And so they're both going to show up from the ultimate DAX that the visual is sending. Um, and so it's just a question of which one actually performs better and what's it doing. So um, I would say that if you do it from an actual DAX measure perspective, you potentially have better control over what it's doing, maybe, uh, as opposed to just sticking it in the filter pane. Um, but I, yeah, so it depends. I and, and, and the volume of data also depends because I can't tell you how many times in, I, I, you go and create a measure and it's fast. It's just fast, you know, and then the data grows and it's slow. Yeah. Like, why is it slow? What am I doing? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and there's <laughs> Mark. <laughs> he said UTC is the only time zone that matters. Uh, no, Mark is from the UK. Um, so, uh. yeah. Ah, uh, Yoast, uh, there is a newer tenant setting uh, for external sharing. What does that mean? Oh, that's good. Let's go over that. Let's go. Uh, let's go find it. Uh, external. Uh, invite external users to your organization. So that's B2B. Uh, where else? External sharing. So it's disabled by default. Um, so this... Uh, is that the one that you're referring to, Yus? So, I mean, this is all about do we allow external sharing uh, in the organization, right? So you can enable or disable that. Um, and then and then combined with the potential B2B. Um, and, yeah. So uh, the other thing, uh, if you didn't notice, uh, like the actual sharing dialogue. So if we go to, let's go to my adventure works. Uh, we'll go into my report. And then if we go to share, you'll notice that the share dialogue is different now as well. And so it's more, it, things are aligning closer to like the way office, office. works. Um, and so office. that's why some of these changes are coming in is, is um, you know, office. how those things works and sharing and, and whatnot. And so the external link and how this plays with externals and people outside of your organization um, or people inside. So it's very similar to the office feel. And so it's going to relate to uh, some of these sharing items and how we can enable uh, external pieces. I don't see it in the docs, though. I, I know that's what people are saying the... is that there's no docs. And so we, uh, oh. you know, we can we can follow up on that. I, I think it's fair. Yeah. It should be there should be documentation. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. That should be fair. So 
um, so yeah, for changes like that, it's important to have documentation that goes along with it. So we'll follow up on that. I know some people. Uh, I know some people. Oh, man. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so David. Uh, David. Uh, what triggers a report quid to change? We talked about this, didn't we? And I didn't know. Uh, yeah, kind of. So there used to be... Uh, so going back, and I thought they fixed this. Fixed um, it. Yes. That, that was fixed. So originally, uh, what happened was, is that from a workspace perspective, so if you just had a report in a workspace, um, that URL was not consistent. And so like from a deep link perspective, it would like always bust things. But then when you published it from, a, from an app or the content pack perspective, that GUID for the report was always consistent. Um, and then my understanding was that they changed it uh, to where uh, the link or the GUID for the report in the uh, workspace um, is always consistent. So the, the deep link, it'll, it'll stay the same. So even if you rename the report in the workspace, the GUID should stay the same. Um, so that should not should. change. Now, now what will happen though, is if you have Power BI desktop, and so you publish that to the workspace and you get the report and there, there's a GUID there, and you rename Power BI desktop file and then republish that, that will get a different GUID because it's technically a different report artifact that got published based on the name. Um, so... So that's. I, I, I thought they fixed all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so the actual, yeah. So the republishing of the report with a different name is the only thing that I'm aware of that would change the report quid. Um, yeah. So, and, and well, and that, that renaming and like all that stuff, like I, I have to go back and re verify, but I thought all of that was corrected a long time ago. Yeah. yeah um, yeah, in terms yeah, of just too. getting that deep link. I, I, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, and David brings up a good he point, deployment pipelines. Up. But yeah. but the deployment pipelines, so if we understand, so the base um, the base report in the deployment pipeline, so the workspace that's at the starting point, so say it's the dev, and then we have test and production. So again, mm -hmm. for dev, mm -hmm. the GUID for that report should not change. But if you rename yeah. the report in dev and then, re and then push it to test, that's effectively a new artifact in test. So the GUIDs for test will change, right? Because you changed it in dev. So dev going from dev to test and deployment pipelines is not carrying over that GUID necessarily. So when you rename the report, it's treating it as a new artifact at that point. So, yeah. So, and then uh, you said there was an update. No, no, you you just that, you about the pipelines about the pipelines. You said yeah, yeah, and and so that's yeah. So in the base pipeline, it should stay consistent. But when you push to like test and production, it could change. Depending on if you if you rename the report, it, it I would expect it to change the GUID at that point because it's technically a new yeah. artifact from a tracking perspective, um, and so you got to be careful about that. Uh, but if the name stays consistent and it republishes, I would hope that when it goes from dev to test and it's the same artifact, that it would just modify or overwrite the existing one and not change the GUID. Uh, but if you're saying that it does change the GUID when you do that, that's not great. Um, yeah, if it does, that's the, I haven't actually looked at that. Um, so, oh, that's hey, cool. hang on. Hang on, let me look. Do I have one? I don't. All right, I'd have to set one up. So, um, yeah, that's not ideal. So, um, by design? Maybe? So, all right. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. So, cool. That was it, Patrick. We cleared the queue. Oh my gosh. That was for the spider. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, Eric says we need a by design jar. <laughs> All right. So we got we got two minutes left. We have cleared the queue. That is... Uh, Yes, and she threw stuff. She was she was ducking down behind my, my monitor and was ready for it. Um, yeah, Laura, we cleared the queue. Look at that. It's bananas. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, Patrick, any words of wisdom? No, not today. Uh, actually, you know not what? Today, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna do to Patrick what I do to my daughters when they come home from school. Patrick, what did you learn this uh, last week? Share something you learned this last week. 
Oh, some PowerShell stuff. I learned some stuff about yeah, creating playing around with service principles. And, and... Yeah, playing around with some service principles. It was, it was yeah. good. It's good yeah. stuff. Stay tuned for the video. It's going to be really interesting. I think it's going to be really interesting. I think it's going to be one of the best videos so far of the year. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> it's good to have aspirations and goals. Um, and Wyatt, I think you know it what is. Else though, I think Adam. it is, Wyatt. Go ahead. You know what else is the um, Synapse. Synapse is very interesting, man. I'm, I'm really learning and digging and learning about all the things that it can do. It's it's really interesting. Uh, I should have yeah. started this journey a year ago, but yeah. it's, it's an interesting yeah, product. We're going, so. we're going down that rabbit hole now. So oh, yeah, Alex yeah, says he misses being in PowerShell. He wishes he could be in it more. Yeah. Okay. PowerShell is magical. Um, yeah. yeah, so Laura said, what did you learn, Adam? I actually learned about some internal stuff on like data flows and like how it works in the service, oh. which was interesting. Um, so it's it's I, I would say it's not exactly something I can share those details on the stream, but uh, it, it was interesting. I love internals, so I love learning about how internally how things work. Um, and obviously because of my day job, I can I can learn some specific things that most people can't. Um, but it was, it was just interesting how those things relate to each other. But, uh, the other thing too, is, is knowing some of those things. And I would say, apply this to anything you're doing. And, and this is why it's going back before about, you know, learning about the VertiPack engine and how it works and, and what's going on and how these things relate to each other. I also like back when I was in support, um, you know, my support focus was reporting services, connectivity to SQL server. It was not, my focus was not the actual SQL server engine. Although I did learn a lot about SQL Server Engine, and I found the more I learned about that and going back to internals, how do these things work? When something comes up and you're trying to understand what are my options to resolve it, knowing how those things relate to each other, I can know about like, okay, well, is this something I can employ to help fix the given thing that we're hitting? And that came up yesterday when yeah. we were going through some data flow yeah. stuff. And it was like, I'm like, no, like knowing the internals of stuff and how things work is super important. So don't don't blow yeah. that off don't um don't just feel like it doesn't apply to you it's always good to know that that stuff and then patrick what you're saying yeah. about synapse and like what i've learned about sql server over the years i've never i've never said i'm a sql server person i'm like i know a lot of stuff about it and i probably know more than a lot of people um but um just knowing how those things relate i, I know i know how certain things like work from a connectivity or bi perspective as a result of that and so it's mm -hmm. it's very powerful in terms of optimizing and thinking about solutions and things of that nature. So anyway, all right, we made it into the stream another week. So uh, just note for everyone else, uh, next week we will not have a live stream. We've got another horse competition. So yeah, Patrick, I, no. that's that's your notice about that. <laughs> Patrick didn't know. I didn't tell him. Um, he finds out just like everyone else. Um, so yeah, so next week we will be uh, doing the horse thing again. So uh, uh, no live stream next week, but the week after that we will be back. So. Have a great weekend, everyone, and we'll, uh, we'll see you online. See you on the interwebs.